Senator Ron Wyden joins us in the studio. Always a pleasure to have you here. And I Thank guess a lot of disappointed constituents because you're not wearing Valentine's red today. <laughs> but on a more serious note, Attorney General William Barr in the news for interfering both in the Roger Stone case now and also interfering in uh, the Michael Flynn case, and both you and Senator Merkley have called for his immediate resignation. Can you expound on that? The, the most significant development, and I guess it's just an hour or so old, is the president says that he has the legal right to interfere in these Justice Department matters. And as far as I can tell, the president is just cranking out these legal theories faster than a short order cook. But this is really ominous stuff because the Justice Department is supposed to represent the American people. It is not uh, an agency that is the president's personal lawyer. So uh, I think uh, the Congress and I hope that my colleagues on both sides of the aisle will say that there really is something important to preserve in the uh, independence of the Justice Department. I want to talk about a more local case, one yes. that uh, we've been following pretty closely all week about um, a black man who was arrested a while back. He has since won uh, a, a case for about $600,000, wrongfully arrested by the former Westland police chief. Now you are calling for the U.S. Attorney's Office to investigate whether his civil rights were violated. And in a story we just did earlier uh, in our five o'clock hour here, uh, a, a local pastor said, we hear from people that this is 2020, we can't believe this is still happening. Other people say, no, this actually happens all the time. When things like this happen, what does that do to people's confidence? Well, it's just devastating. And I mean, this, this is conduct that I don't think people would have accepted in 1920, let alone 2020. And that is why you've got the congressional delegation uh, digging in, and we are going to uh, push hard for justice. On a, another note, election security. Here we have the presidential election coming up in a few months. And now we come to find out that here in Oregon, Jackson and Umatilla County ran a pilot program with a voting app which later was warned that that voting app could be subject to hacking and security falls. That must have sent you bananas because you've been saying all along, do it the old fashioned way like Oregon with paper ballots, mm -hmm. whether you want mail in or not, get back to paper ballots. Let's get away from this technology that's vulnerable to hacking. Jeff, my, my tech people told the Democratic National Committee that they thought there were gonna be problems in Iowa because that app there had not been tested. It had not been audited. And based on what we know, we could be going through the same uh, situation with this uh, new app that could be used with our service members, our wonderful, courageous service members. We want their ballots to count. Okay, so this was voting for, for, for people overseas, and these two counties mm -hmm. were using an app. Did you let the Secretary of State here in Oregon know that you're concerned about I, this? I, I certainly did. I told Secretary Clarno that at a minimum, what you need to do is you need to ask for the test results. You need to ask for the audits. You need to know, for example, how people are going to be trained. The problem in Iowa, for example, they had problem downloading. So these are just the basics. And uh, uh, we've uh, made uh, this letter that I've sent to the Secretary of State, uh, Secretary Clarno, available. I know you've pushed for this for a long time uh, and proposed several bills on election security. Where do some of those stand? Well, I actually spoke on election security on the floor this week because I was so troubled that a number of really pretty new Republicans just said, we're not going to do anything. And finally, I said, let's make sure the country understands this. We now have voting machines with an open connection to the Internet. Yeah. And your viewers should know that is like stashing our ballots in the Kremlin. It is incredibly irresponsible. We ought to be working on a bipartisan basis. Do you think it. some of this is uh, uh, your colleagues and other politicians don't understand really how technology works? They don't have a basic knowledge of... Like what you said, that's just an open line? That may be part, part of, of it. it. And certainly what I've tried to say as a member of the Intelligence Committee, and I'm not going to get anything classified, as of right now, I think the threats we're going to face from hostile foreign powers in 2020 are going to make 2016 look like small potatoes. Mm. And I think a number of my colleagues haven't really been willing uh, to look at this. You know, they've always said, oh, you know, Putin didn't do anything wrong, you know, this, this kind of thing. But I think also a little bit of this may just be a willingness to support, to, to support voter suppression, too, and not wanting to have people vote. Every time you come here, I think we say, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to talk about, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Let's do it again. Thank yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Everybody.